morning everyone so welcome to another video discussion that we will be having for today so um what we're, what i have in store for you today is something that is very important and is very much needed for us to be able to understand the succeeding lessons that we will be having so expect that this video is really intended to really be short because this is just an introduction of what's going to be discussed ahead so analytical techniques so as medical technologists it is very important to master the analytical techniques first and foremost number one because this is our best friend when we are inside the laboratory so when you are already working as a medical technologist and even if you pursue medicine or any health practitioner this analytical techniques the machines the principle of the machines is very important for you to be able to provide the best and the ex an excellent services for our patient and we always want that okay so analytical techniques talks about the different instrumentation that we will be discussing so the first few analytical techniques and machines that we will be discussing will all be about the clinical chemistry and then succeedingly we will move on to immunology to hematology and eventually to microbiology and other sections in the laboratory so when we are talking about analytical techniques there are actually four major um, analytical techniques or four major um, principles or areas that we will be discussing the first one is spectrometry the one that i will be discussing for this morning and then we have your luminescence we also have your electroanalytic methods and we have your chromatography of course i won't be here to discuss much about the other three but i will only be discussing the spectrometry so spectrometry have you ever wondered how does a medical technologies are able to measure your glucose your lipid the enzymes the sgpt the sgot or even some of the um even the principles in microbiology and in hematology maybe you're wondering what how do they ab how do they able to compute or measure that particular analyte and let me tell to you that it is through your spectrophotometry yes it actually sounds like a tongue twister but spectrophotometry is not a tongue twister spectrophotometry is one of the very much important principle and actually one of the very important thing that you have to master Be um, i am creating this video separately to explain to you spectrophotometry and beer's law because this is this will be the foundation of the succeeding videos that we will be having i will be having a separate video for your spectrophotometer and then one separate for your atomic absorption spectrophotometry and one separate for your flame emission spectrometry so that you will be able to have a chunk and a separate and a very much um a bite size so to speak a bite size um portion of our discussion for today because if you're gonna ask some medical technology students and even our board takers one of the things that is really challenging when it comes to clinical chemistry is actually the instrumentation part because there's a lot of machines not to speak not to mention there's a lot of principle behind that and the the very reason i am doing this is that sometimes when we are using this when we are um when we are just running the samples in the laboratory it seems so easy it seems so um effortless sometimes you won't even sweat putting in your specimen your your qc materials or whatsoever there and not realizing that within that beneath that there is an underlying principle that needs to be discussed and that needs to be mastered for us to be able to be more effective and for me efficient when it comes to instrumentation so for spectrophotometry let me go through the analytical technique 
which is your spectrophotometry. So what do we mean by spectrophotometry or your spectroscopy? Absorption spectroscopy has provided scientists with a means to use both qualitative and quantitative methods of measuring analytes in body fluids. So be it your serum, your plasma, your urine, your CSF, your synovial fluid, your, your pleural fluid, whatever fluid that may be, you will be using your spectrophotometry, your the principal adsorption spectroscopy for you to be able to qualitative or quantitatively measure a particular analyte. For the clinical chemistry, for medical technology, we're more concerned of the quantitative measurements. So meaning, we actually have an actual value for a particular analyte, be it your glucose, your cholesterol, your triglyceride, we have to have a definite quantitative value. Why? Because this will now be the guide of our physicians for the medication, for the treatment, and the, for the patient management that will be happening for your patient. Okay? So this is actually coming from MacPherson and Pincus, the best shop, I, the Henry's as we call it, the Bible of the MedTech. So, very important for us to understand is the beer's law. Okay? Hep, hep, hep. I'm not talking about the beer that you drink on the bar or the, the beer that you actually are craving for because we are in community quarantine. But I am talking about a law, the beer's law. So let me introduce to you what the beer's law is all about. So the beer's law, okay, the beer's law was first described by Lambert and Beer. So these are two colleagues that actually describe the absorption spectrometry okay so lambert this law was formerly known as the lambert beer law but now since beer was the one who elucidated it further it is actually known to be the beer's law so coming from bishop your beer's law describes now the relationship between the absorption of light by a solution and the concentration of that solution and that's what's important for us medical technologists the concentration of the solution that's what we want to know but it's not just the concentration that we're getting it's actually the absorption and another thing is the transmittance which i will be discussing to you in a bit so let us dig in now about the beer's law yes cheers for the beer's law so what is Beer's Law all about? So Beer's Law states that the concentration of the substance, this is now the analyte that you want to measure, is directly proportional to the amount of light absorbed. And I want and I intentionally color the thread. And when we say light absorbed, we are talking about the absorbance. Okay? The light absorbed by that particular substances or that particular analyte that is of unknown concentration or we can also say that the concentration is inversely proportional to the to the logarithm of the transmitted light and i again intentionally colored that blue because i want you to remember transmittance so for the red color i want you to remember absorbance and for the blue color i want you to remember transmittance i hope you're jotting that down so this is coming from Bishop, the 8th edition. So, let's talk about absorbance and transmittance. In a nutshell, for us to be able to understand it better, your absorbance is the light absorbed by the solution. So, imagine this one. You're actually passing through a light and imagine that when there is a substance in between the, in between the light, it will actually block the light. Okay, it will actually block the light. In a more specific, in a more precise way to say it, it actually absorbs the light. And that's what we mean by absorbance. On the other hand, what is now, what is transmittance on the other hand? Transmittance on the other hand is the ratio of the incident light and the light transmitted. So when I am saying incident light, this is now the light coming from your source and the ratio now of the light being transmitted kung ano lang yung nakatawid from 
the solution. So I want you to picture it out better. So I have here a diagram. So take for example, we have a vial. A vial or in spectrophotometry, we call it your cuvette. Okay, and we're going to discuss that further when we discuss the different components of your spectrophotometer. But for now, let's focus on your Beer's Law. So what we have now is your, your, your cuvette or a vial that will now contain your solution. So take for example, I have a light source and I, I, um, I projected the light. So the light now will be passing through that vial. So example, that vial contains now your solution. Take for example, glucose, so that we will be having an, an, an example. So take for example, that solution contains your glucose and a light pass through that vial. Of course, some of the light now will be absorbed. And that's what happened. It is now absorbed by the solution. And that is now your absorbance. Okay, I hope we're clear. On the other hand, sir, what about your transmittance? So, the as we were describing a while back, the transmittance is actually the ratio of your incident light and the light transmitted. And for this time, I hope I know that in some of your books, it is actually I zero, I subscript zero, and I subscript with um one. Or in some books, it's actually I and just I subscript zero. So for now, I will be this. I will be describing the incident light or the initial light to be I zero, okay? I zero, and I will be calling this the in the the incident light, and this is now the light transmitted. Okay, this is the light transmitted on your left. So having said that, that is now your transmitter. So your transmittance now, or your percent transmittance, is the ratio of your incident light, okay, that is your IO, and your transmitted light, that is your IT. Your transmitted light, on the, I intentionally did the 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 right the right part of the arrow a lot lighter because assumingly, not all light, not one hundred, not one hundred percent of the light that is produced by your light source was able to pass through because again some were absorbed I, are we clear so that is absorbance and that is transmittance mathematically we can also describe your absorbance and transmittance and this is very important as we go deeper now to your beer's law your absorbance is described to be the negative logarithm of your transmitted light and your incident light okay again i want to emphasize that i am making this subscript specific for this lecture so that you will be able to understand it better okay so in other terms in other words your absorbance is also described as 2 minus the minus the logarithm of the percent transmittance so technically on the upper half on the upper part that is already your transmittance why because your transmittance is described to be the transmittance is actually your what the percent transmittance or your transmittance is equal to the light transmitted all over the light or the incident light again the, your percent transmittance is your li the light transmitted all over the incident light again you will you might be asking sir what is the two minus logarithm of percent transmittance i would want you to look at your bishop for you to be able to to see the example but technically what we have here is the logarithm of 100 which is equivalent to 2 and we canceled it out that's why we have 2 minus the logarithm of your percent transmittance so in a nutshell okay in a nutshell what i want you to realize now is that once when the value of your absorbance is 100 if 100 percent of the light is absorbed that goes to show that that is zero percent transmittance i hope you're getting that again i'll repeat that if the absorbance of a solution is 100 percent meaning 
Lahat ng ilaw, all of the light has been absorbed by the solution. The transmittance now will be equivalent to zero. Bakit? Kasi lahat na block or lahat na absorb. Are we clear? So that is how the relationship between your absorbance and transmittance is. And it is very important. But sir, let me go back again. Isn't it we're after the concentration? We're not after the absorbance and we're not after the transmittance. So here's the thing. Isn't it? I mentioned a while back that when the absorb when the concentration is unknown, you look for the absorbance because that is your that is the one directly proportional to your concentration. But did you know that you cannot directly measure your absorbance? But you can mathematically derive the value of your absorbance. That's the reason why transmittance is still very important because that is what is readily measured. So, going back now, reviewing it, your Beer's Law, again, states that the concentration is again directly proportional to the light absorbed, your absorbance, and inversely proportional to the logarithm of the transmitted light or the percent transmittance. So, in a nutshell now, we know that absorbance, that absorbance is directly proportional to the concentration. Okay? We all know that your absorbance is directly proportional to your concentration. But Beer's Law explains it much further as absorbance is equal to the molar absorptivity times the light path times the concentration. Oh my gosh, sir, things get a little bit complicated. But hold on, do not be frightened because your absorbance, again, is A, your molar absorptivity um, symbolized by your small epsilon sign, and then your B is your path length, and your C is your concentration. And that's what's very important, your concentration. So, sir, how are we... A how are we going to be able to get the concentration again let me go to this first your molar absorptivity is con a constant okay your molar absorptivity is a constant and your path length is actually constant as well so technically those are already known and what you need to know is the concentration and what you need to know is as well is the absorbance so you can simply cancel out your molar absorptivity and your path length but to be exact why is path length um why is path length also a constant so let me describe to you what is a path length first a path length is actually the distance with the distance that your light traveled okay the distance that your light traveled so take for example your light is coming from here from the from the left side so please watch out for my cursor let me try to change it to a an arrow no it, it didn't so let me a laser point or oh, take for example your 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 light is coming from this one so the light the, the distance traveled now by your your light in the solution is your path length are we clear so that distance there that, that purple there the distance from this point to this point is your path length and usually that is also a constant because most of our cuvet has the same configuration so having said that now going back so let's try to decode it further so again your absorbance is directly proportional to your concentration and as Beer's Law explain your absorbance is equal to the molar absor the product of your molar absorptivity your path length and the concentration of your sample so now what we're going to use to measure your absorb how do we now measure your concentration we measure your concentration by knowing your absorbance and we use your negative 2 minus the 2 minus the logarithm of your percent transmittance and again if we're gonna go back to your percent transmittance that is what your percent transmittance can be calculated by finding the quotient of your your light transmitted all over your incident light okay i hope it's clear so 
that's now uh, that now lead us to your spectrophotometer your spectrophotometer which is again a very important lo a very important machine and i hope i was able to explain to you what beer's law is all about your beer's law technically is the principle that govern your photo your spectrophotometer okay so what we what we are getting there is actually your percent transmittance and for us to be able to get the the concentration we get the absorbance so how do we get the absorbance by measuring the percent transmittance and again what is the formula for your percent transmittance that is the light transmitted all over your your incident light okay so when we discuss your spectrophotometer i will be going through um the the basic of your energy of your radiation the frequency so that we will again be um in very good footing and foundation when we enter the different um the different components of your spectrophotometer so again what is your spectrophotometer therefore it is used to measure the light transmitted by a solution to determine the concentration of the light absorbing substance in the solution and i hope by this time while reading the definition of your spectrophotometer you now understand now how does your spectrophotometer does that so it measures the light transmitted so that is your transmittance to determine now your concentration how does you, how does you how can you compute your your concentration by measuring the light transmitted that is by the knowledge that some of the light is actually being absorbed and that is your absorbance so that is your spectrophotometer so that now is your spectrophotometer and i hope and i really i really hope that you were able to grasp that because we will be having the next topic and that will be your spectrophotometers i hope everyone will be i'm very much excited so these are actually um the books that we are using your the principle the clinical chemistry by bishop and henry's 23rd edition by mcpherson and pinkus so that would be all for this video so i will be seeing you next time as we discuss your spectrophotometers that would be all good day and have a great great day